Uh, so Mahin was really a brave girl. She just 18 years old, and she agreed to come over here, uh, you know, from far away from Bangladesh to share her story. And um, because she feels it is important to people in the, this part of the world to know that what's really going on in back home who making clothes for all of you. And she really wanted to see a change. That is why she agreed to come. So, um, you know, further I go, I would uh, request Mahinu to speak. So Mahinu don't speak English. I'll be translating for her. And then I will add some comment in the later. Hola. My name is Mahinul Begum. I'm a survivor from Rana Plaza. I started working when I was 13 years old. I had to start because, you know, uh, I had to su start supporting my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I was working at the factory, the working condition wasn't good. It was harsh working condition, long shifting hour, like 8, like 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And even we had to do the night shift. There was normal verbal, verbal and physical abuses, production quota pressure. And yeah, I'm safe work place. I didn't get an hour back, say, or didn't get, or didn't get me at the duties. I was for a Amago Jorko, the girl, Dukonohoi, that for a Amra Casco, the Lucasco, or for a at a shop the hay, shop the for a manga for a day, for a day for a Amar for a machine for a fire for a machine for a fire angle of the guy to die, that for a man for a machine for a. So the day when my factory collapsed, the Rana Plaza, uh, I was at, in, in the factory. So uh, along with all, I came at 8 a.m. for my workshop, but we wasn't agreed to go inside. We knew the factory is unsafe, but we were being forced to go inside. They have been pushed us uh, and uh, you know threaten us that we'll not get our salary, and also some workers has been bidden to go inside and keep working. So uh, uh, we were you know. We were working and it was like less than an hour we were able to work. Suddenly I heard a huge sound, boom, and then everything started falling. And I fall in somewhere and first of all, one machine fall in my right leg and then one machine in my chest and top of that, the concrete started falling on me. They started falling on my head, in my ear, and my ear, left ear started bleeding and I got unconscious. তারপরে আমার একটা ছেলে উদ্ধার করে অনেক জায়গা ছিদ্র করে দেয় তারপরে আমার হাসপাতালে নিয়ে যায় নিয়ে যাওয়ার পরে হাসপাতালে আমি 2 দিন থাকি তারপরে 2 দিন পরে আমার হাসপাতাল থেকে বের করে দেয় তারপরে আমি বাসায় এসে আমার নিজের টাকা দিয়ে অন্যান্য জায়গায় চিকিৎসা করি so uh, it was a day and uh, you know uh, during the midnight i had been rescued so it was day and night i was uh, in, in in there with my co-worker i hear a lot of scream my co-workers to save them but you know uh, in the middle of the night there is a rescue team went inside and they had to break through at least 10 places to rescue me and my co-workers who was still alive so uh, after rescuing me, they took me to hospital where I found that I lost one of my toe. And I was admitted in the hospital for 20 days. And I wasn't even cured enough. They forced me to leave the hospital. And you know, still I need to get a medicine and medical treatment. So I started you know, uh, borrow the money from my neighbors and taking medicine from other hospitals. আমার পরিবারে আমার মা ছোট দুই ভাই আছে আর আমি আমার বাবা নাই অ্যাক্সিডেন্টে মারা গেছে এখন আমাগো চলতে অনেক কষ্ট so I have my two younger brother and my mother in my family my father died in an accident and me and my two brothers and my mother is you know depend on my earning and now I don't have job তারপরে বলো আমি 
আমিষ দেয় তারপর থেকে আমার চাকরির বয়স থেকে আমি তিন বছর আমি গার্মিজ চাকরি করছি তারপর থেকে আমার সাথে গার্মিজ এমন ভালোভাবে ব্যবহার করে নাই আর সবসময় খালি খারাপ ব্যবহার করছে আর গার্মিজে আমরা যদি যাই না যাওয়ার পর আমাকে শিক্ষা দিত যে আটটা বাজ সাতটা বাজ ছুটি দেয় আর সাতটা সাত তারিখে বেতন দেয় আর আমার সাথে ভালো ব্যবহার করে আমাকে বকে না আর ভালোভাবে ছুটি দেয় ভালোভাবে ব্যবহার করে কারণে <laughs> we don't work long shifting hour we get decent wages there is no abuse at the factory so we always been coached so if we would not been coached if everybody would do their work properly this accident would not be happen ar ami garmi je khoti pon hote pare ami taka paisi 95000 taka paisi e taka diye amar shongshare kono salary nai ar amar chikitsar jonno kono taka paisa nai ami so so far by you know uh, after this collapse by name of compensation i just received 1100 dollars which is nothing everything has been spent for my medical cost and now i'm uh, i'm in a situation that uh, i cannot bring food in the table and the brands those who are sourcing my uh, from my factory they didn't compensate us eta amar ek masher betone ek bosor er betone che kom আমি টাকা পাইছি সো দা अमाउंट इवन आई रिसीव दैट इज लेस देन ए 1 ইয়ার স্যালারি दैट आई यूज टू मेक बट यू नो इट इज बीइंग 2 ইয়ার্স आई डोंट हैव एनी जॉब আর আমি সঙ্গে থাকি আর কিছু বলো আপনি বলো সমস্যা নেই বলো আর আমি বলতে আসি যে এটার জন্য দায় মালিক বায়ার সরকার <laughs> and i believe the you know the people who is responsible for this accident it is factory owner my factory owner the government and of course the brands those are sourcing ami sai je ar kono garmi jano emon na hoy ar buyer ra sob shom jani amoke ta khel rakhe ar garmi jano bhange chhere na pore ar amoke sathe jano bhalo bhalo bhabe byabohar kore beton jani thik moton dey e bollai So I'm here to tell you know all of you that uh, our demand is not so big it is very uh, you know small demand we have that we want a decent wage a safe workplace and a respect at workplace that is why I'm, I came in here and the brands and other stakeholders they totally can do that I don't I really don't want it to see any other accident uh, you know happens in Bangladesh what happened in my factory So in order to have that, will you be with us? Thank you. I started working when I was 12. Now I'm 38. So I have, you know, I, I, when I was working, I didn't know anything. Then I educated on the law and rights. I started organizing my co-workers. But what happened? I have been fired and blacklisted. Since then, I never stopped. You know, keep raising my voice. F- keep fighting in my, you know, my country and back home. Asking this safe workplace. There was, sa- you know, there was fire in my factory when I was in the, f- uh, our, in my factory when I was working. We have been locked up. We raise our voice that you just cannot lock us when we are working. But it haven't changed within the 20 years. If we just go back in 2012, there was a huge uh, or horrified fire happen in a factory called Tajreen Fashion, which has killed uh, more than 100 workers and laf- left a couple of hundreds injured for a lifetime. And it's all, beca- uh, all happening, the reason, I'll just echo Mahino, because the, the, all the stake, all the stakeholders within this supply chain, they just don't believe that we are human beings. They just don't believe it. They are still, you know, in their, 
the same corporate behavior that they were a hundred years back or 150 years back. You know, when Morgan was talking, she, uh, she mentioned about the, the, uh, the fire in a factory here in United States, the Triangle Shard Wrist Fire, which has killed 146 workers, majority of us female workers. After that fire, many things has been ha changed in the United States in order to having safe workplace, decent ways and respect at workplace, right? But what happened? The brands or the companies, they started moving. They didn't like that workers raised their bodies. They, they didn't want to see these people are empowered. They always just think about their profit. So throughout this century, if we go back and if we look carefully, just only thing this corporation has changed, that is the place. They moved to New York to, you know, south to the United States, then Mexico, Latin America, now in the global south. Now we, are, we raised our voice, maybe they will move to Africa. But I would say it is, it is the time for all of us. I think throughout this in the, uh, you know, century, we have, we have been seeing seen a lot of change and it is time for all of us working together and make this brand to change their corporate behaviors. You just cannot move your production to other country when we talk about respect. You have to keep buying our clothes, but in the same time, you have to respect us. You have to ensure a safe workplace in our factory. So Mahino don't need to come over, fly over like 12,000 miles and you know, telling people, I was trapped in that building for a day and a half. We can bring like more success story that this industry empowered women, right? That sounds great. So the students, uh, you know, I mean, I know that in this room, you all are consumers and you are a student. So you have like kind of double leverage to make, you know, make this brand to change their behavior. So here we are campaigning with USAS to have BF Corporation to sign on the accord on Bangladeshi fire on building safety. It's a, you know, ground breaking piece has been signed after Rana Plaza collapse. Now we have almost 200 brand who sign on that, brands and retailers from across the globe, majority of them from Europe, and it's a legally binding document. It is enforceable, it's included workers' voice. Um, it is nothing like Mahin would uh, explain that they have been always coarse on what to say during the inspections. It is workers can include during the inspections and who choose the workers, not management, not handpick. It is union choose the workers who will talk to the inspector during the inspections. So truth, you know, can be discussed. And after the inspection, uh, the accord go back to the workers and discuss about the follow-up report, like what was the findings, what would be the necessary repair and renovations. And again and again, they do the follow-up. And every inspection report you can see in the website. So there is a transparency, right? That we all need. But we are asking this BF Corporation to sign on these, and we do have leverage to ask them. The reason is there is a 91 factory that BF use in Bangladesh, where 190,000 workers are working. Without signing the accord, they went with Walmart and Gap, uh, uh, you know, to initiate another non-binding agreement, which is called alliance. That doesn't make any you know, sense to us when it is like same as it is their code of conduct. Their code of conduct is a non-binding agreement. It is voluntary. So again, this alliance is a non-binding agreement. So they're denying, we, do, we don't know that what BF have to say or what leverage they have said to not to sign on their code to go to the you know, alliance. But we are asking university students to go to their administrators and ask them, to record their university, who is sourcing, you know, who, who have, a, have a licenses with them, so they can ask them that their university should record their, you know, the sourcer to sign on the accord or cut the contact. So we are, this time we are asking specifically for BF because they are all over. Every university you can find these gen sports, right? And, and others. So I think uh, we are asking students from this university 
please raise your voice and support. You, you already said that you're going to be with Mahino in order to make changes. So please go to your administrator and tell them that you really don't want it to see the workers die in a hundreds in those factories who's making clothes for or you know making the sports gear for your book store. I'm not talking, maybe it is a specific case from Bangladesh, but if we can't stop them now, it can be happen anywhere, any you know, cloth manufacturing country, maybe in next one hour. So it is for all of us, I think it is time for stand together with solidarity and you know, support workers in Bangladesh. Thank you. clean brands, that, I mean, not just with the university, but I mean, just in the general population, I mean, if you, what do you recommend if you're trying to be conscious about this? It's a good question, and maybe you have some thoughts to come <coughs> on. I think that, um, you know, all brands have, have their flaws. I mean, they, they are operating under this model of producing in countries around the world purposely to cut back on labor costs. And so, um, you know, we do endorse like one particular brand, it's called Ultra Gracia. Um, it's the only made uh, uh, brand of union made living wage collegiate apparel. It's created by USAS and workers um, back in the early 2000s after a factory there was shut down. We reopened it with, um, you know, uh, workers who are now in a union. And um, that's something that would be great to, to have in a bookstore here. And, and I definitely encourage folks to, to get behind that brand. But um, I mean, write that down. yeah. Oh, Ultra Gracia? Yeah, I yeah, can write that. But you know, right now, I think we can basically tell you more of the brands that you shouldn't be supporting. Um, and again, you know, we believe that it's a systematic fight, right? Like the only way we're going to have an impact on these brands is if our universities that have these huge buying powers of eighty million dollars take a stand and say we don't want your brand on our campus and we don't, you know, we don't want to do. Uh, we don't exchange money with you. So that's why you know, we're, we're operating under this model, because if I stopped buying Nike today, would they change anything? Probably not. So um, Ulta Gracia is, is a great brand um, that makes like blanks and collegiate apparel. But specifically right now, I mean, the brands that we're trying to uh, hold responsible to what's going on in Bangladesh are the Children's Place, if you all have kids, I don't know. Um, the Children's Place, uh, VF, which owns 30, like 30 of those brands I was mentioning before, um, Walmart and The Gap, mm -hmm. and Benetton, which is more of a European thing. Yeah, yeah, and Children's Place, Benetton, uh, Walmart, uh, and Gap is for the compensation for both Rana and Tazreen fashion worker. And who can be the be you know, there is no better, okay? They can be, you know, in compared to good than other. So I would say, um, you know, Tommy Hilfiger and Kelvin Klein, this is the first brand who signed on the accord in order to take in responsibility that they will you know, make this workplace safer. Though we had to do a lot of push to them, right? <laughs> but <laughs> at least they did. Uh, like Sean John, they were sourcing from Tazreen Fashion, uh, where uh, you know, fired, killed more than uh, 100 workers. But when we raised voice all together, they signed on the code and they say, yeah, they will take this responsibility to make this workplace safe. So you know, in compared to Gap, Walmart, BF Corporation, I would consider you know, they're at least better than them. Right, mm -hmm. so these are the you know good one. But if we talk about the wages, nobody is good because we get only sixty eight dollars per per month, which is our minimum wage, and we can't live with that money. And it is you know first of all uh, you know our factory owners of course they pay less, but who enjoy the bigger piece of the pie? Mm -hmm. That is the brand. They also pay less to the, our factory owners, so they cannot give us a living wage. So this is also our call to the brand that just add few cents more, that will change our livelihood. There is no doubt, bottom line, we, do, we need these jobs because we are talking about four million workers, over 80, who were over 85% per, are female workers working. They are so young. Uh, the average age range is 23 to 25. So we need these jobs, but we want these jobs with dignity. Yes, please. 
So is this push more focused on wages or safety conditions? This time we are pushing more on the safety because the, when we talk about safety, uh, the ECHO also created another you know, platform for workers to uh, give uh, one step forward to organizing union their workplace. So, so far last two years after signing the accord, and also, you know, there is so many focuses, there is so many pressure from to the our government to um, open the window for workers to get <coughs> union registered. So we were able to have 200 union registered by last two years, and now workers are working to have their, uh, you know, contract with their respective factory management. And in that contract, we are putting the wage increase. So campaigning as a whole, uh, you know, uh, regarding the wage increase, we are doing the safety and creating workers' platform to organize them, and maybe the next step for all of us to campaigning on the wage, where we're going to push a huge push to the brand to add few cents more. Involved in creating the accord and like who helps to kind of oversee it? Uh huh. Okay, so the accord has signed between the companies and union. The union, global unions like industrial, uh, uni global, this is two global union, and the unions from Bangladesh. So uh, those are affiliated to these global unions. And who created? That's a good question. Okay. The first of all, I don't know. You you hear about Worker Rights Consortium? Uh, this is USAS created this uh, this organization, who is independent monitoring organization. Basically, these folks started along with our organization, Bangladesh Center for Worker Solidarity. So we campaigned extensively last three years, even before Tajreen Fashion happened. You know, since 2011. So we campaigned across the uh, you know, US and also Europe, but I, we just got two or three brands to sign on before this catastrophe have happened, this too big you know, accident. And then when Rana happened, it's really you know, escalated the situation. So the consumers group, the newspaper, everyone like put pressure on, and this company really get afraid about their you know, reputation. When your reputation goes, your business goes. So they understood that. Then they started like, uh, you know, falling as like house of cards. They just crushed and they signed. So it is basically, you know, not corporation itself which says, hey, let's do something better. No, these workers and unions, we campaigned all together and happened. And USAS was amazing on that campaign. Yeah. Yes. Have you had any international campaigns where workers say, uh, who manufacture clothing for a particular back brand in Bangladesh, as well as, as well as workers in Guatemala who manufacture for the same brand. Um, is there, have you had any international campaigns like that, like a concerted effort? That it's that's a good question. That's definitely something that's in the works um, because that would be the ultimate source of global solidarity to be able to do that. Um, it takes a lot of work. I think the way that we've structured our campaigns, like this is probably one of the most sophisticated and just like lofty campaigns that I think success has ever tried to run. It's a really big demand. It affects thousands and thousands of workers. And in the past, we focused more on one factory and a specific injustice and have been able to campaign around that to change uh, the precedent for brands and how they produce. So for example, like our first campaign against Russell Athletic, which is the subsidiary fruit of the loom of huge uh, collegiate brands, when they shut down a factory, um, and didn't, you know, uh, we, we got them to reopen it and that sort of changed the name of the game for other brands who tried to do the same thing. We said, uh-uh-uh, Russell did that in this particular factory, now you have to do the same thing. So the same with Nike. So when Nike agreed to pay the severance wages they owed to workers in Honduras, we ran a campaign against Adidas a few years after when they also shut down a factory in Indonesia and we said when Nike closed their factory, we said they were responsible for the wages in that factory and so you were responsible as well. And that precedent is now like in schools' codes of conduct where it says that brands are responsible for paying severance. So um, it's, yeah, we haven't tried something like that, but you know, we're, we would love to expand in that way. I think that the model we've used is very um, narrowly focused to sort of change practices on a, on a broader level. Yeah, and just to add with that, uh, for Adidas campaign for Indonesian workers, the workers in Bangladesh, we send solidarity, you know, the workers in Adidas factories in Bangladesh, we send all the solidarity supporting letter to the you know, company that, you know, we are making clothes for you too, so it is your responsibility. We need that. Yes. What kind of role do 
you see for like the national governments, like for the Bangladeshi governments? Uh -huh. It's a tough area. <laughs> It is so difficult for us to, you know, fight with our government uh, to have these rights. The reason is they're really, really powerful. 10% uh, of our factory, 10% uh, of our parliament members who own gr a group of garment factories. So our legislator is our factory owner. They put me in the prison. I was in the prison for a month when I raised voice, you know, along with workers, we raised voice uh, to review the minimum wage. They brought 10 different criminal charges against me. And after, you know, right after that, they killed one of my coworkers. So it is so hard. But the pressure always worked. You know, the outside pressure, the consumer's pressure, the government's pressure to our government. So this is only time we get some relief to push them and say, now you have to do the right thing. So after Rana Plaza, uh, the workers, you know, uh, I, I would say like a couple of hundred workers, they went to strike, you know, uh, went kind of like a strike. They took over the main streets and said, you have to do the right thing. Make our workplace safe. So respond to that, our government has taken an initiative. Uh, it says they, they uh, adopt a policy on national fire and building safety. Again, they made us full. So that is still in the document. There is no, you know, implementation on that, so. There we are with our government.